that long day behind you. Good times lie ahead with company worth keeping. That'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open. You'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. Music, medicine, then some. The talk, talk, talk of the tavern. The songs. And welcome to the tavern, everyone. My name is Travis I. Sir, author extraordinary. Check it out at travisivart.com for all the books and podcasts out there. My advice is tonight, something we share at the beginning of every show, is uh, I get coffee and then I got a pipe with some dark cherry tobacco. So good stuff there. What about you, Ed? Uh, let's see. My advice tonight is I will stand by, you know, Noir course cheese what about you andrea knitting <laughs> and i have coffee what more do you need mm-hmm. what about you guys throw that in chat maria says her vice tonight is bedtime tea <clears throat> and give me a second i'll turn it up maria says no i can't turn it up let me do this that'll help okay Turn me on, babe. Let's get our opening toast. Uh, Let's do that. Here's to all those sensitive, sensitive people that give us so much to talk about in the tavern. Yeah. Okay, so tonight's topic is uh, more shit you can't say. Because we've talked about this, where just different things, you know, as as the world is changing and we're getting older and a new generation is coming in, that uh, there's some things that we're trying to change. Um, And we've discussed this various times in the past, but we've got some new stuff here. So we're going to start with, uh, Ed, you supplied something. Um, And Andrea just stepped away for a second. I don't want to go into this too far. So what we have here is a list of what we used to say and what we should say now instead of it. So the first thing on this list, Ed, do you want to read the list or do you want me to read the list? You can read the list. I like your voice. Oh, thank you very much. It likes you too. (laughs) You make it go down. So the first thing on the list is, uh, we're going to pull the trigger. We're going to pull the trigger on this project. We're going to, you know, pull the trigger, get this thing done. Um, and yeah, we shouldn't say that because we're trying to move away from violent language. And, and actually this, the fucking title of this picture is evolving from violent language. So we're, we're evolving. You know, whenever I hear that, you ever seen South Park movie? No. There, there's a scene with Saddam Hussein is in hell and he's dating Satan. And Satan's like, oh, you're always just like using me and you don't really love me. And Saddam's like, no, I can change. Watch, I'm changing. And he like does this stupid little fucking dance. He's like, see, I changed. So here we go. Instead of we're going to pull the trigger, you want to say we're going to launch. Oh, so instead of pulling the trigger, we're sending a whole fucking rocket at you? Yes, Andre. Triggered because I was there when the Challenger blew up. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> See? You know, there are triggers on things beside guns. For example, there's triggers on people. <laughs> there's a lot of triggers on people nowadays, which is Kind of what we're talking about tonight, isn't it? Maria says, okay, pull the trigger. I get why people would be upset about it. Um, and Maria says, I think trigger is less triggering. It's less triggering. So, uh, okay, what about I'll take a stab at it? <laughs> Don't say that anymore. It's violent. 
So instead, right, well, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, Maria asks, what's wrong with saying ready to go, ready to start? Nothing. But we're not talking about what we can say. We're talking about what we shouldn't say anymore. And I'll take a stab at it. And we don't necessarily agree, okay? Though with some of... It's just an interesting list. And we do have more than just this list. Uh, instead of saying, I'll take a stab at it, I'll take the first pass at it. Which, by the way, we can't make passes at things anymore. Because that's... Exactly. Mm-hmm. Somebody is going to be triggered by that, too. Mm-hmm. Somebody else might get lucky. Like so, did we jump the gun? Instead, what are we going to say, Andrea? What are we going to say? Instead I have no idea. of, did we jump we'll the gun? That. What else can you say? I don't say anything. Did we start too soon? I don't say that. And, you know, something else that's not on this list, but can we stop saying jump the shark? It's I a 40-year-old... It, it, it comes from, I want to say, happy days, where Fonzie jumped a shark tank. It, it's like going way over the top. Um, and, and, yeah, see, you guys are, like, mystified by it. Maria is mystified by it in chat, and... Uh, yeah, I, it's, I think it's too old of a reference. It's not current anymore. And yeah, nobody knows what it's old. <laughs> well, apparently not us, because we're not old enough to remember it. It's, it might have been Evil Knievel. I don't know. But Jump the Shark is just going like way over well, the top. Well, he does that. Who does? Evil Knievel, he jumps stuff. Or did. Matter of fact, his son died recently. Just in the beginning of well, 2023. Mm -hmm. It's a rough life being a stunt person. Well, once you're dead, it's no longer a rough life, is it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't talked to them lately. Maria says, I'm Maria just says, <laughs> Go ahead. Sharks are also triggering. Just saying. It's true. So, yeah, did we start too soon? Which is something a lot of guys say during sex, too. Um, yeah. I'll bite or, the yeah. bullet. Don't put that in your mouth. Yeah, shouldn't <laughs> say that anymore. It's violent talk. Say, I won't avoid it any longer. Who says that? Who says, yeah, I'm not going say to gonna avoid it any longer? <laughs> Nobody says, I'm not going to avoid it any longer. We right. all try to avoid... Whatever it is, we try to avoid. Whatever it is. That'll kill two birds with one stone? No, you use two stones like everybody else. I don't know. You got your kind of aim. You might need like 50 or 60. Hey. But instead, you'll say, that'll feed two birds with one scone. No, I won't. I'll feed two birds to a cat. <laughs> I mean, no, I won't. You little fuckers are feisty tonight, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the deadline? Can't use deadline anymore. You got to say what's I'm the... I'm triggered by line. Yeah, well, the, this, the, the answer is more triggering to me. What's the due date? That That's just pregnancy. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, nope. you can get in trouble saying that. What's the due date? And, uh -huh. hey, are you calling me fat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pregnant. I just want to know when the email is going to be out. We have to pick our battles. Yeah, we can't pick our battles anymore. We now have to choose our opportunities. But this is this is really going to ruin um, Sun Tzu's art of war being taught in business schools. And Maria uses two birds with one stone and pick your battles all the time. I use pick your battles all the time also. Because telling somebody pick your battles is generally telling them to not 
get into a fight over that shit. Because it's not important enough. <laughs> Maria says, it's an opportunity to fight. <laughs> you want to read her comment there, Ed? Maria says, I'm just never going to be allowed to have conversations again. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. So, Maria, interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have I... to hold those fingers up while dancing? <laughs> um, can you shoot me an email? No more saying that. I can have to you, send an email? Can you send me an email? Yeah, that's what you're going to say. Very good, Andrea. I don't, want to, I don't want to write an email. That was overkill. Was Instead, it? you say that was a bit excessive. When you put bit in there, that's no. passive aggressive. Can you just say that was excessive? Yeah. That you, was you put, fucking put, excessive, sir. <laughs> you put bit in there, and I'm like, oh, excessive? You want to fucking see excessive? I'll show you excessive. Challenge accepted. See, I still enjoy the phrase that escalated quickly. <laughs> Because it's sarcastic and yeah, fun. Yeah. And maybe mm. we could just use that instead of that was overkill. Just be like, that escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Maria says, oh, come on, overkill? Sure you can. Wait, what of a serial killer who killed a bunch of people? Can you use overkill then? No, you say that was a bit excessive. Yeah, she only killed two or three good. people instead of ten. Would have been okay. Just a bit. It's Merca. I bombed the presentation. Oh. Instead, you should say, I didn't do I my didn't best. I didn't do my... Yeah. There we go, Ed. You can read the answers. I'll read Let's the... just roll with the punches. Okay. Oh, I'm reading the answers. Okay, sorry. It's okay. I forgot. <laughs> black black well, guys come last. Oh! That's let's, let's jump. We could jump down to the list as that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Get to that one in a minute. Uh -huh. I, I bombed that joke. Uh, I didn't do my. No, we already did that. Roll with the punches. So, no more rolling with the punches. You just take it in the face. No, you say, let's just move forward. You see, I, yeah. I like using my in probably. They would probably maybe say it wasn't as harsh. Tuck, duck, and roll. That that's my motto, man. Tuck, duck, and roll. Fade back and punt. Can we say that? What are you tucking up? <laughs> well, you know. Well, he tucks it up and then he rolls it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Maria says real talk. I don't like that at all. Don't like what at all, Maria. Um, yeah. Emery also said, I think Bond is kind of fading away. Because rolling with the punches acknowledges that you're wounded. Let's move forward. Makes it mm. like nobody did anything wrong. That's interesting. Ooh. That's Ooh. interesting. Because, mm. yeah, it's uh, generally if you're rolling with the punches, you did get the shit knocked out of you, but you fucking recovered. Let's just move forward. It's like ignoring the fact that, hey, is that victim blaming? Okay, we can soften the blow by cutting it with baking powder, right? No, wait, that's the wrong kind of blow. We can soften the blow. Mm. Ed? We can make it a little easier. No. Maria, I'm loving your take on this. <laughs> yeah, me too. And Tal has popped hey, in. Everybody, look. Hey, Tal. It's Tal, Daddy Travis's bad girl of editing. Mm. She she popped up. Can we say popped? Are we still allowed to say pop, or is that too violent? I don't. I don't know. It, I, I don't know. I'll check the list. Pop um, is in gun. No. And by the way, again, can we make it a little easier? Do we have to put the word "little" in there again? Isn't that a little passive aggressive? A little. A little. Who are you calling little? <laughs> Not you. If you have to roll it, then tuck it. Uh, so, uh, 
I'm going to take a shot in the dark. I lost my place. I'm <laughs> going to take a guess. Why not just say, I'm going to guess? That sounds horrible. That sounds ignorant. Taking a shot in the dark, at least. Hmm. See, that's not a bad idea, which I, I referred to earlier. What? Is That's not a bad idea. That, it's a phrase. Yeah, that but, <laughs> but they want to say, say that. that's a good idea, but it, it may not be a good idea. It's just not a bad idea. Right. It's like a mediocre idea. It's better than what we right have. Idea. Right. Right. We could just take the word good out and say, that's an it's idea. An idea. <laughs> I say that. I do right. too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not beat a dead horse. Let's not. Well, what other kind of horse are you going to beat? A live one? Maybe. See, I have a problem with their. You see, Tal just points out Aussies say things like that all the time. How are you? Not bad. <laughs> See. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mildly evil. <laughs> um, Just a little bit. Let's not focus on that anymore. Is that like, let's just ignore this other Forget thing that's obviously still a problem that we haven't solved? Let's call the whole yeah. thing off. <laughs> you say tomato. I say tomato. I was blown away by her presentation. I was impressed by her presentation. Is that what you call it? Mm. Yeah. I'd rather be blown away by her presentation. Yeah, I, yeah I, you would. I don't think of an explosion when somebody says blown away. I totally like write to oral sex. Yeah. Yeah, that's an explosion, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was kicking around an idea. Is that a bad one? Well, you were beating a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> See, Tal says I go to wind with the blown away thing. Yeah. I was uh, thinking through an idea. Uh, okay. The last one on the list. When I'm recording audiobooks, my voice gets very rough. So I try to make sure, and podcasts also, so I try to make sure I have a big mug of something to pop in my mouth. And you know one thing I love to pop in my mouth? The first thing that comes to mind when I'm talking about popping things in my mouth? Titties. That's right. Tit Tees is an incredible brand of tea. And they have multiple types from green tea to white tea to um, herbal tea to my favorite black tea. It's Lit Fam is what that one's called. And talking to Mike at Tit Tees, and you can talk to him also at T-I-T-T-E-A-S dot com. That's titties dot com. T-I-T-T-E-A-S dot com. This company, these, this small business that's that's doing this out of love and the joy of sharing something they also donate five percent of every month's revenue to breast cancer research foundation supporting awareness programs and breast cancer research so i got this incredible tea with this great sense of humor that matches so many things that i do and they care about other people i couldn't go wrong with this and now i have a big old mug full of titty to pop in my mouth to keep my voice smooth and rounded which is exactly how i like my titties so check them out at titties.com use the code travis20 that's travis20 to get a discount on yours and uh yeah pop a titty in your mouth you're welcome Breast regards. He's a straight shooter in meetings. Oh, you can't say straight. 
<laughs> He's pretty direct in meeting. You see, I I think I I prefer straight shooter versus pretty direct because pretty direct it sounds like you're trying to be polite and say you're an asshole, but you know I'm not going to say you're an asshole. I'm just going to say you're pretty direct. And Tal says, I go dirty there with straight shooter. And Bob says, you'd be impressed by my big presentation between my legs. (laughs) Bob, good to see you in the tavern again, man. Welcome back. Good to see you, bro. It's been too long. That's right. Welcome back. So, we've also got this wonderful article I found. (laughs) Ten Rules of Productive Online Communication. Gen Z edition. Mm, you Who's go. Gen Z? What? Who is Gen Z? It's uh, Jennifer Zigwelly. No, what years oh. is that? Uh, I don't know if they define 2,000 the... kids? Uh, generally, yeah. Generally, yeah. After millennials. Oh, geez. When are millennials? Okay. The 90s. Okay. So, uh uh-huh. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh, he said 98 to 18 is the millennials. Okay, let's Google real quick. So, like, (laughs) oh, nine or something. When is My kid was born in 99. Gen Z, colloquially known as Zoomers, um, researchers. Like at two in the morning. <laughs> researchers in popular media use the mid to late 1990s as starting birth years, early in the early 2010s as the end. Underscore underscore oh, thank you, Ed. X two hundred. You're welcome. So, uh, yeah, I guess it varies. But, yeah, the latest generation that's entering the workforce. How about that? Whatever year is that? Okay. So, number one of these ten rules to productive online communication, which may mean emails, may mean chat, such as what we have on the show here that we were talked to, or it could mean text messages. Never end a sentence with a period. I'll read this and then we'll discuss it, okay? By the way, there is actually a news clipping. Full stops can annoy Gen Z, warn linguists. So, <clears throat> if someone ends their sentence with a period, stop all the jokes and behave yourself because, oh boy, they are damn serious. Imagine your partner texts you, I'll be home for dinner. No period. How lighthearted and cute is that? But if your partner texts you, I'll be home for dinner period, it suddenly becomes a threat, as in, you better darn be there when I come home and make good food, otherwise you're in trouble, honey. Your boss... (laughs) Hold on. Uh, Just a couple more sentences. (laughs) Um, You find a period... Now, we're we're grammatic... Hold on, Tal. I'll read that in a moment. Uh, Your boss texts you, meet me in 10 minutes, period, equals you're about to be fired. Your friend texts you, I am happy for you, period. Highly likely they hate you and even wish wish the worst for you, but they have to text anyway because every friend in the group is doing so. So, uh, so, um, yeah, a couple comments in chat. Tal says, Tal, who's a professional editor, uh, says, I find a period to be passive-aggressive behavior, which wars with the fact that I need it as an editor. For internet, uh, JC says, for internet use, I fell into that for the end of a message, period, like this. Here's what I'll say. If you're writing out a paragraph, use fucking punctuation. Because I don't know where one sentence ends and another one starts. And you look like an idiot. Yes, Andrea? Instead of writing a fucking paragraph, pick up the phone and call them. There's that, too. (laughs) But in an email, you're not going to end sentences with a period in an email? Don't do that shit. I've seen people apply for jobs 
and use like text speak Ooh. and not proper punctuation. Yes. You know what? No. No. <laughs> Cal says, wait, phone? No. Um, yeah, because we're old, so we'll actually call some fuckers. See, Maria says, I just hit enter and then make the next sentence its own thing, like I did there. And that's fine if you're in a chat. But again, I think the context of where these things are being done... Um, See, it's okay. I'm going to read this one paragraph out of this news article. Uh, the The news article is titled "Full Stops Can Annoy Gen Z." More linguist. There's no period at the end of that. Uh, using full stops in text and messages, you could offend or upset young people. Linguists have warned teenagers and those in their early twenties, Gen Z, who have grown up using short messages to communicate, can see the punctuation mark as a sim symbol of curt passive aggression. Linguist Dr. Lauren Fontaine tweeted, if you add that additional marker for completion, they will read something into it, and it tends to be failing intonation or negative tone. By the way, she ended that with a period. And that was a tweet. Yes, Ed? Can I say something to the young people that get upset about a period? <laughs> uh, sure. Get the fuck over it. Period. Period. <laughs> No, exclamation point. Well, at least you didn't use a period. Mm -hmm. That's not passive aggressive. That's just aggressive. Wait, is it okay to use like three punctu uh, exclamation points then? I do. So, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Andrew, you got anything <laughs> on this before I... I'm just laughing at chat. Do you want to read something? They're, they're all against the period, but it's not grammatical. And uh, against the comma also, apparently. Punctuation is the white man's way to control us. <laughs> you tell him, bro. <laughs> Bob is back. Oh. Bama. <laughs> Number Bama. two. Never text without emojis or text emojis. So, to read... Why? I'm going to explain that. Here it goes. Texting strips off physical emotions, which are an important factor for meaning interpretation. Therefore, you are, yes, sadly, required to show your emotion when texting. Pretentious as it might be, since you might not really mean it, but want the other person to think you mean it, using emoji text emojis during conversation is a social norm. Consider this sentence. You have been to Jan uh, Japan before? Question mark. And these, you have been to Japan before? The surprised emoji. You're surprised someone has the privilege to go there. You've been to Japan before? The the little thinky emoji. You Ouch. doubt what they say is true. Ouch. Hold on. There's those sounds. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, and then the last one is the Ouch. eye rolling one. You think going to Japan is a bad idea. The other person is so stupid for having gone there. So the emoji changes the whole feeling of the sentence. So what do you guys think? Do we have to use emojis every time we text somebody? I don't think we have to use emojis, but okay. I have to say I get where they're coming from a little bit here because Travis, you probably remember back in the old days of when we had the reenactment group, mm -hmm. we used to communicate a lot via, via Yahoo message. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things we often said, when you're typing with a dozen people in Messenger, you don't always know the emotion that they're putting behind what they're saying. Right. So there is a benefit there. Are they joking? No. Here's an Are example. Being an asshole? Earlier today, I was streaming. And Rachel was there, and she said something, and I had no idea if she was serious or joking. Like, I may have upset her, and I had to have that clarified, so I found out. But uh, a few comments from uh, chat. Tal says, screw that. I love emotes and emojis, but I message way too much to include one all the time. 
Maria says, maybe you're required to show emotion. I'm a cold-hearted bitch and proud of it. I get what they're saying, <laughs> but if you know the person, surely to God you can figure out their tone even through text. JC says, someone please tell me what. And it's colon and a number three means. As a Gen Xer, I have no idea, but I keep seeing it. Isn't that a cat? I think Isn't it's just... somebody's nutsack hanging. <laughs> it's a blow job. Or a boob. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't You'll that... never unsee that. Isn't that like uh, Noid Noidberg Voidberg from uh, Futurama? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Too old of a reference. So, uh, if I could find it, I'll post it in chat. But. Hmm. This brings you back to a key and peel skit where one is texting the other and one's like, hey, you know, da, 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 da. and the other one's like, oh, no, you didn't. It's fucking hilarious. I'll try, try to find that. Yeah, that, that's a good one. It's uh, And by the way, Tal says, ooh, woo, drives me nuts. U, capital W, U, ooh, woo, drives me nuts. Ed, you look confused. Yep. Don't you know what uwu means? I don't know what. Fuck no, I'm old. Andrea, do you know what uwu means? Yeah, me neither. I have a vague idea, but no, I'm pretty fucking clueless on this one. Anybody help us out? <laughs> uh, what the hell does uwu mean? Isn't it like, like a goofy agreement? Oh. It's an anime cute face. Who the fuck has a face that looks like Uwu? Okay. Oh, there's it. You guys, after we finish the show, watch that YouTube video. Andrew, keep, keep that link available. Or drop it in Discord on the tavern page. Okay. Here we go. Now, we talked about this one a few shows ago. Uh, Maria says, I refuse to give up one emote I use, which is the lesser than three for a heart. Yes. Um, number three uh, on this list of ten. But do not ever send colon, parenthesis, or smiley. It's the, it looks dead in the eye. It's passive aggressive. It's cold. It reverses all possible meanings of what it explicitly texted. If somebody oh. texts you, congratulations on your new role, Smiley, they probably mean, <coughs> mean something along the line of, I'm happy because we no longer work together with each other. Or, that role should have been mine, motherfucker. It's that Smiley's are passive aggressive thing again. God damn, I'm terrified of smiling at people when I talk to them now. Just put a mask on, nobody will know. <laughs> Can I wear my Richard Nixon one? Like when I robbed that bank? Anyhow. Uh... <laughs> Maria says, dear Lord, give it up, Snowflake, and deal with it. It's an emote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll just go to number four. If you've seen it, Oh, we talked about this the other day, but we didn't go into this. If you've seen it, reply it. Can be anything, but reply it anyway. And that's how this person wrote the article. If you've seen it, reply it. Can be anything. Reply it anyway. The act of seeing, in other words, when you have a text message or uh, a chat message and it says seen on the bottom so you know the other person saw it, but not replying can mean a lot of things and none of those carry positive meanings. Some examples, <laughs> you're rude. You don't try to continue the conversation or even bother to tell me to end it. You don't love me anymore. You're busy with someone, something else, more important, interesting, sexy than me. You're arrogant. You don't think I deserve an answer, even the simplest. You don't respect me. And the last thing, you want war? Game on, bitch. Uh, they're saying it what about, um, I'm busy? Yeah. Yeah, I got a life. Uh, if it was important, you would have called me. Ed. The conversation would never end because they would see it 
and reply, and then you would see the reply and reply, and then they would see your reply and reply. So when does the fucking conversation end? Diddly. <laughs> yeah, and Maria says, oh, I turn that shit off. Sometimes I need to think about a response or fall asleep. And you can turn it off on some things, but like, for example, on Instagram, you can't. But yeah, this is a bit oversensitive in my head, like way oversensitive. Now, here's one speaking of Instagram. We all know what stories are on Instagram, Facebook, etc. Mm. Okay, they still confuse me, by the way, but they're like not quite a video. They're just something you put in a special place or some shit. If you've seen my yeah. story, you better reply to my message. Do not ever think you can get away with previewing a person's message on Messenger, not replying to them, and proceeding to view their Instagram stories without them Message knowing. You, Here's the sad truth. Many people, after posting their Instagram stories, check who's viewed them. Every now and then, they'd open Instagram, tap on their own story, swipe up and see who's viewed it, and swipe away the app, all within a matter of seconds. Um, so they know... Not precisely, but quite correctly, that you've seen their stories. And mm. if you haven't seen their messages, you would think you knew they messaged you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know. Delete. So, I can't just look at somebody's story, be entertained, without having to give them a cookie and tell them they're Good puppy. Mm, yeah. What are they gonna do? Reward them. Yeah, uh, Maria says I happen to apologize when I notice I've not responded to someone in a while. Too, I think I've done that with you, Travis, and you've called me out on it. Where I said sorry, I was X Y Z, and you're like, dude, it's a message. If it was critical, I would have called or something to that effect. Um. <laughs> Maria then says, you wouldn't have said dude, but you get the drift. Are we allowed to say drift anymore? <laughs> I wouldn't say dude, he'd say bitch. <laughs> uh, no, this is way oversensitive and controlling. You want to talk about passive aggressive. Yeah. It's something you posted online. Now, if somebody on Instagram shares my post in their story, I tend to like... Give them a little heart there, you know, do the double tap so they know, hey, I saw it. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. But their story? The fuck? Yeah, no. No. No, fuck off. Okay, ready for number six? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> a C, I like that, Maria. Maria says, see, when I was growing up, I was raised to understand that nobody owes you anything. Thank you. And this is a bunch of people going, you have to give me everything, but I don't have to give you anything. That's what I'm hearing from this article. So number six, ha ha doesn't equal funny. What does it mean? <laughs> if your date ends their sentence with ha ha, good luck, your friend zoned. No, I'm just being an extreme head. It's not that bad. True. But let's do an <laughs> let's do an exercise. Can you try reading a sentence that ends with haha? -ha? Does it sound fun? Do you actually laugh at the end of a sentence? No weirdo does that. They laugh while they are talking when it's really funny. So we don't laugh at the end of a sentence. Instead, we L O L L M A O we R O F L. I don't do that. If you want to make it extra funny, capitalize everything. Okay, it annoys the fuck out of me when people type LOL after everything. Because I like, I know, I like, I, I watch them and they're not laughing, and I'm like, you are not laughing out loud. You're lying to me. Why? That's when you put a gif of a cat giggling. Like what you hear? Want to know more? Go to travissivart.com. Check out his books, his podcasts, and all the other things he does. See, I, I, I'm a text Nazi. It annoys me when people type LOL and the and the first L is capitalized and 
and the O and the <laughs> second L are, are lowercase. So like, be consistent. Do it all one or yeah, all one or the other. Now, come on, you're being fucking lazy. <laughs> Maria says, I do sometimes read ha ha as that boy from The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. See, I read ha ha as in you really didn't fucking care. So, whatever. <laughs> or like from The Joker. That works, Brother Bob. That works. Number eight. Be careful with being okay. All four letters, okay, A, Y. During a verbal conversation, a simple okay is sufficient. When texting, you need to be extremely sensitive to certain people as they might take your okay quite heavily. Now, there is a list of like eight things here. <laughs> Different ways of saying okay and how they all offend. <laughs> so, K. Okay. You're okay. Oh, I hate that. But so unimportant, you can't bother to type the full okay. Lack of respect. By the way, a lot of times when I respond to something when the conversation is okay or, or done, it's K. Okay. It's just to let you know, I saw it, got the message. We don't need to say anything else. K. Okay. Especially if I'm in the middle of something. Don't put KK. Okay, you know hey. what? <laughs> Uh, okay, with a capital O, lowercase k, well, not too distant, but too cold. Uh, okay, capital O, K-A-Y, hmm, you don't seem to like it. It's okay with hesitation. Oh. Okay. I usually spell it out. And, and Bob just said, okay, I am oppressed. Here's this one. Okay. okay, with two capital letters, yeah, I know you're okay, no need to shout it in my face, Rude. <laughs> John says, I know another four-letter word that's not okay. It's probably okay here. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Oki, that's cute. O, and then there is three Ks. O, K, K, K. Hmm, you're overly enthusiastic. <laughs> Trina, one word, T-R-Y-N-A. Trina, impress me not. K, K-A-Y, you are mad, I can tell. K-A-Y, period, abort the mission. Someone is extremely annoyed. That's just all I'm going to type now. Okie dokie. <laughs> so, what are we allowed to use? Can we just not use okay at all? Use this. Okay. You can't use the thumbs, thumbs up. up. We found that's offensive, remember? Why not? All right. Smiling. Use this. That's <laughs> right. Use the middle <laughs> finger. Message received. He says, I'm pretty sure the only one I haven't used before is just the letter K. I thought they were interchangeable. Well, that's Me why too. we're here in the tavern. We're here to educate. See, and Bob <laughs> says, okay, KY jelly. Yeah, no smiley faces, no kissies, no thumbs up. They're all offensive to millennials. <clears throat> oh. Number nine. Capitalizing the first letter of a sentence will reveal where you are. What? <laughs> I never thought about this, the article says, until a friend asked, were you outside when texting me? I was shocked. How could she know? Yup, it's the way I capitalize my first letter. On the laptop, which usually means I'm at home or cafes, I almost never capitalize my letter when chatting with my friends. It's because there's no need to. But on my phone, the first letter is auto-capitalized no matter which app. So next time, if you don't want to give away your whereabouts, either start capitalizing on your computer or change phone settings to never auto-capitalize the first letter. Ha ha. So, are they no longer teaching um, grammar in school? Because I know they're not teaching cursive anymore. So, are they not um, mm. enforcing punctuation either? Just saying. Here's how <laughs> fucked up I am, okay? Because I use Messenger kind of sort of for people that I don't have their mail or email address. 
I use messenger type of way of email. Right. So here's how fucked up I am when I'm doing that. I even type that shit out in a word document to make sure I have all my punctuation and everything correct. And then copy and paste it to the message. Man, I'm really messed up, I guess. Yeah. Just a little bit. And Maria says, hang on a second. I'm going to check messages, but I'm like 99% sure. I always capitalize first letter. I usually do sometimes in chat, especially if I'm, Typing one-handed because I'm surfing porn with the other hand or something. Yeah, you won't get a capital letter. But, uh... <laughs> you ran out of hand, bro. Oh, Kyle says, wow. So, I have changed my punctuation and stuff to when, when I um, text. Now, I do not put two spaces after the period anymore. Just oh, one. Look at you. Welcome to the 90s. <laughs> um so yeah marie actually went and checked and said okay so today i did both <laughs> and did not capitalize first letter but i was on my computer at, at all so this is false news uh yeah and tal says wow i just face roll face plus keyboard equals message two spaces are mandatory says bob so the last one in this article and this one, I kind of see this one. If I tag you on my story on Instagram, you must repost. Nope. This, this is considered basic etiquette, like saying hello when you see a friend or saying please when you ask a favor. It's an act of exchange. Yep. Someone promotes mm -hmm. you on their story. You must also promote them on yours. No. 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 Says no. Helen. See, when somebody repost my post to their story i always respond but if they just tag me well i mean what happens when i go and see they tagged 50 people right okay if they're expecting I, everybody to go ahead ed i i'm not on instagram but I am on Facebook and people quite often tag me in posts. And when I see that they've tagged me in a post, it's like, why did you tag me in that shit? And I remove the fucking tag. So I'm maybe, they just wanted you to, maybe they just wanted you to see it. Mm. That's when I tag people. You don't have to respond. You don't have to do shit. I just wanted you to see it. Mm. Right. And a few comments in chat. Uh, Tal says, hell no. Maria says, on Instagram, yes. On Facebook, no, because I never check that shit. I feel like at least you should like the post. And Tal says, firstly, you have to figure out how to do that, and I'm too old for shit like that. <laughs> Fun fact. Now, our chat, we, we're, the three of us, we're in our 40s and 50s. A lot of our chat ranges from their early 30s to 70s. But a lot of the people mm. that are agreeing with the hell no shit are in their 30s. So, yeah, it's not just us. Wait, too old? What? No, not too old. Oh, wait, Tal is too old. Yeah. Too old to figure out every fucking new thing that comes along. So, <laughs> once again, guys, welcome to the tavern. We're going to help educate you how to welcome new folks from a new generation into the working world by typing horribly and not offending them. Hey, Bree. It's... Hey, darling. But we're going to wrap this episode up with, uh, hey, if you can't remember all the rules to not offend them, at least have fun fucking with them. Here's to that. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, I fuck with a lot of people every day. Any closing thoughts on this, guys? I'm rolling the music. Yeah, I do because um, I I try to be I, I try to remind myself times are changing. We were born in 1964 or whenever, but, but yeah, I, I I don't know some some things ridiculous as shit to me, and I won't comply. I'm gonna be one of the I will knock them. Andrew. No, just no. Okay. 
Make sure you guys join us for another tavern. We'll see you then. Good night.